guys, welcome to today's video. So today I'm going to be reviewing the Ordinary Concealers. I know there are several of you that have been waiting patiently for this video and I really do apologize on how long it has taken me to film this video. The Ordinary has gifted me these concealers, so I'm not being paid to talk about the products. They just sent me these concealers to try out and then of course to give an honest review to you guys. Now when they sent the first batch to me, they did send me three shades back in early January. It actually took several weeks to receive in the mail because here in Canada, for some reason, our mail has been really slow since January 1st because of COVID. So it did take a long time to receive the first three. When I received the first three shades, these shades were not the proper shades for my skin tone. So of course I didn't want to review them back then because they're just not the proper shades. So I did let The Ordinary know and they did send me three lighter shades which are definitely better and I can make these work for my skin tone. So that is why it took me so long to film this video. So thank you for waiting, but let's get right into it. But before we do, if you could please like this video, subscribe and ring that notification bell. By doing so, you will always be notified whenever I upload a new video and I do upload videos every single week. So as you can see, I do have a full face of makeup, but I didn't apply any foundation or concealer to my under eye area because I actually want to demo the concealer, show you how it applies, how much coverage you can get from it, and then of course I will tell you the longevity and the texture. So I have used these concealers multiple times and I've also used them different ways as well. I've used them with different foundations, different tinted sunscreens, and I've also used these with different moisturizers as well. So I'm gonna give you an honest review based on my experience, so let's get right into it. So The Ordinary did release 36 shades, and they also have different undertones as well. So depending on what your natural undertone is, you will have a better idea of what shade to pick from with that undertone. So for me personally, I have a yellow undertone now. Naturally. So when it comes to concealers and foundations, I do like to choose either a warm or a yellow undertone. Pink undertones definitely don't work on me. A lot of neutral undertones can look a little bit gray on my skin tone. And then of course there are red undertones. And from The Ordinary, they do have one that has an S in it. And I wasn't sure what that was, so I did ask them and they actually said that it's a natural silver highlight that was added to that concealer to complement the shade. So I actually don't have a concealer with the S undertone, but that is what the S means if you did notice that on the website. The shade range actually starts from one, from the lightest, and it goes all the way to a four, which is the deepest skin tone. So that will help you to decide, of course, which one would be best suited for your skin tone as well. Now these concealers are full coverage. So a little bit goes a long way with these because I'm telling you right now, they are definitely Definitely full coverage. So if that's not really your thing, just take a little bit of the concealer and mix it with your moisturizer or even an under eye cream. And this will help to sheer out the concealer and it will give you more of a light to medium coverage. And that's typically what I like on myself. I don't like anything too full coverage or too thick because I want my skin to still look skin-like and I want to still be able to see my skin shine through my foundation as well as my concealer. So just mix a little bit into your cream if full coverage is not your thing, but if full coverage is your thing, they are not joking, it really is full coverage. So these concealers retail at $5.80 Canadian, which is a great price, and you are getting eight mils of product. So like I said, I do have six shades here so now I'm going to color swatch them and insert some images so that you can see what these look like on my skin tone on the back of my hand so I am going to start with the first shipment that the ordinary sent me originally and I did receive the 2.0 neutral 1.2 pink undertone as well as the 2.0 yellow golden undertone now that one is really dark but I could probably mix a little bit of the darker shade with a lighter shade come summer and then when I'm self tanning and I'm using a darker foundation I'll be able to create a custom shade to match my skin tone come the summer months so that might be a great time to make use of one of the concealers that I can't use right 
right now. So now I'm going to show you what the other three look like. So I did receive the 1.2 yellow undertone, 1.2 neutral, and 1.1 neutral. The 1.2 yellow undertone is a pretty good match and that's the one that I've been using the most. So if you have the same skin tone as I do and you have a yellow undertone, I think 1.2 yellow undertone would be a great choice to go with. The 1.2 and the 1.1 neutral, they're okay. They're not too bad, but I could probably mix it with the 1.2 yellow if I need to and create a custom shade if I really want to be dead on and precise. So those are the three that they just sent me and like I said I can definitely make these work because I'm pretty fair skinned and when it comes to the under eyes I do like to choose one shade lighter than what my foundation is and I do like to have one shade lighter to brighten up the under eye as well. There are expiry dates on these as well which I really can appreciate. There's nothing worse than guessing how long you've had a product for and whether or not it's gone bad. So at the back of the tube, at the very top, is where the expiry is. And for example, one of mine says April of 2022, the other one says June of 2022, and the other one is March of 2022. So it gives you a good idea of how long you have to use the product before it's expired. Now before I demo the concealer and show you how it applies to my under eye area, I want to let you know that The Ordinary says that this is a concealer that will keep your skin looking skin-like. So this isn't going to be mattifying on the skin and this is also not going to be too shiny or oily looking on the skin either. But if you have oily skin, you will most likely would want to powder on top of this once you've applied it to your skin. And if you have dry skin, you may not love this product. And that is where I'm experiencing some issues with this concealer. And I'm going to be 100% honest and transparent with you. I live in Ontario, Canada, so we are experiencing a lot of cold, dry temperatures right now. I do use tretinoin and acids that can dry out my skin also. So this isn't going to dry your skin out, but if you have dry skin, this will actually accentuate the dryness that you already have on your skin. And that is my problem right now. So when I apply this to my under eye area, it really looks super dry in this area here. And I can't stand that look at all. There is one concealer that I am using that keeps my under eyes really hydrated. I will leave that product below for you, but this one I feel like is a little bit too drying to use in the winter months. This might be really good if you live in a warm climate all year round, and this might be great for summertime, and I will have to test it come then, but for right now, I'm not enjoying this because it accentuates the dryness under my eyes. I actually don't powder on top of this because if I powder on top of it and my under eyes are looking dry already, then it definitely makes my under eyes look even more dry. So I have tried using different types of moisturizers with this. I've used different types of eye creams as well and I just can't seem to make this work and have it look good under my eyes. But of course, I'm going to demo it in this video and you will see what I mean and you can make a decision whether you think this product would be good for you or not. So I am going to use the 1.2 yellow undertone and I really do like the packaging. I love the squeezy tube. It's really easy to dispense the product and I really love this long applicator tip as well. I really do like this. So I'm actually going to put a little bit on the back of my hand and I'm just going to grab from that and I like to use my finger because I feel like the warmth of my finger really helps to spread it across the skin and and it just blends better. But of course, if you're into a brush or a sponge, then you can use that as well. So as you can see, I do have a little bit of discoloration in the inner part of my eye. So I do like to apply just a little bit because like I said, this is very full coverage and I don't want to apply too much. And I like to focus that in the inner part of the eye first, like that, and then blend it. And usually I will have to add more, but I like to start with the smallest amount and build it up. So 
So as you can see, it's a very brightening concealer, which I really love, especially if you like that look for under the eyes. And that just makes a world of a difference. It's just so much brighter. So I am going to put just a little bit more in the inner corner because I do have a pinky undertone here. And that is the before and the after. But this formula is honestly lovely. It's not too thick. It has a great texture to it. This really is a long wearing concealer as well. So you don't really have to touch up throughout the day. Once this is in place and you've set it with powder, you are good to go for the rest of the day. And I will set this with powder if I'm concealing blemishes or problem areas on my face. But when it comes to the under eyes, I do not powder up under there. So now I'm gonna conceal the other eye. But you can see how light and brightening this shade is. And again, I'm using 1.2 yellow undertone that if I were to use a shade any lighter than this, then it would be too light and it wouldn't look very good. It would look like I'm definitely wearing a concealer underneath, which I don't want it to be that noticeable. So this shade really works well. Well, that is what it looks like with having both eyes concealed. It just looks a lot brighter and I look more awake looking and it completes the overall look. So I'm quite pleased with this shade. I also use this shade to spot conceal blemishes as well. And I do like the consistency. It's not too thick, but it's also not too thin. It's that perfect happy medium. Now I don't experience dryness under my eyes every single day. So the days that I don't experience much dryness I will use this concealer and I love the way that it looks under the eyes. I actually quite like it. So I will zoom you in just a little bit so that you can see the dryness right here and you will know what I'm talking about. So as you can see, I'm pretty dry in this corner right here and it does look pretty textured. So if I were to apply powder on top of that, it would accentuate the dryness even more. So it's not terrible, but it does bother me. So if my under eyes are dry, I stay away from this concealer, but if my under eyes are high hydrated, then this concealer works really well. These concealers are also non-comedogenic and there is silicone in the formulation. So if you are sensitive to silicones, you may not want to pick up this concealer. But like I said, if you have dry skin and your skin is dry every single day, then I would say don't pick up this concealer because it's just not going to sit nicely on your skin. If you have normal to combination to oily skin, this will be a great concealer to use because then of course you can set it with a powder. Powder. I'm really looking forward to using these concealers come the warmer months because I feel like it's going to sit a lot nicer under the eyes. I'm not going to be experiencing the dry cold weather. Sure, I'll still have dry under eyes maybe from tretinoin and acids, but I can just see it now. I think it's going to sit nicer come the warmer months. So I will let you know come then if I do experience anything different with it and if it does look a lot better under my eyes. So I will keep you updated on that but there is one thing that I wish that the ordinary would have done with their formulation and I wish that they would have added a sunscreen to the concealer because this would have made the concealer stand out even more and I like to have an SPF in my foundation and I also like to have it in my concealer if I can it just gives you that added protection from the sun. Of course, you should be wearing a separate sunscreen, but to have an SPF in your foundation and concealers as well, it's just that added bonus, and I really do like that. So I actually thought that they would have added a sunscreen, but they didn't. And it's not a deal breaker, but it just would have been nice. And that's my own personal opinion on that. 
So that is everything in today's video and I really hope that you found it helpful and that I was in depth and I really hope that I was able to encourage you to either purchase the product or of course pass on it depending on what your skin type is. But like I said, there are 36 shades, there are different undertones and I was able to get a proper match with the concealers versus their foundation line because with their foundation line, I wasn't able to find a proper shade and I also found the foundation line to be very drying on the skin so I do like the concealers a lot better. So thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it and of course I will see you all in my next video. So take care and I will see you guys then. Bye guys.